Hey everyone, this is a quick shoe review for the Puma Trinomic XT1. These are a fairly cheap, reliable, good pair of shoes that I've been wearing for the past couple of months and so today I'm going to bring you my thoughts on them. Firstly, let's start off with the sizing. For some reason, Puma make their shoes so sometimes they'll be too big or too small. I'm a size 8 with uh, my usual shoes and for some reason I needed a size 8.5 with these. The uh, 8 was far too small and barely fit my toe in it. So if you are going to buy these shoes, make sure you get half a size above regular unless you have small feet I guess. Okay, so now we've got that over with, let's talk a little bit about the grip. This Puma has added texture, it has grips which uh, stick out of the bottom of the shoe, which for the first couple of days can be kind of annoying when you're trying to do jumps, you'll find they get stuck on ledges or walls, but within a week they've been completely smoothed off, smoothed down, and had no problems. Actually the grip is really good once that's happened, and I can't say I've got any complaints on that end. Still looking good, holding its own. As you can see, the heel is quite chunky, nothing out of the ordinary, but it did take me about a week to wear them in to make them feel normal for training. And with regards to the width of the shoes, they are quite narrow towards the uh, bottom of the toes. I think that might be just this extra piece of like plastic. Uh, my toes there could feel like they're being pinched and it wasn't too great at the beginning, but once I'd worn them in, they did open up and they were fine. I can say that I have enjoyed using these shoes. They've got a little bit of a raised toe, so they're not flat to the floor, heel and toe. It gives a nice bit of spring momentum when you're doing strides and precisions. And now I'm going to show you some of my training clips and I hope you enjoy. As with most Puma shoes, they're not particularly expensive in the price range. You can get them for around £30, eBay, Amazon, quite easy to find. And they do come in varying colour combinations, they're very nice and comfortable and they're wearing, like I said, rather fast. I managed to pick my pair up on eBay for just over £10 because they were second hand but barely used. So yeah, if you look on eBay you might be able to pick up a bargain. So let's compare them to some other Puma branded shoes which have been known to be really good for parkour in the past. We'll start with the Puma Narita. The Narita is much thinner than these. Um, the mesh is definitely thicker on these shoes. One of the main bonuses I found on these is that the mesh has not gone through at all on either shoes, even though my right foot is slightly bigger and often that's where the problem lies. I haven't had this problem at all with these shoes. In fact, I've worn them a lot and the only thing I've noticed is that the cushioning has been really pushed down and so I'm starting to feel all my landings a bit more than I would really like to. I can't complain because I've had so much use out of these shoes. So yeah, the Naritas are a little bit thinner. They um, are also a bit more pricier and harder to find. I think that these do last much longer and so I'd probably choose these over the Naritas personally. The next comparison would be the Puma Descendant V3 or the Puma Descendant V4. Both shoes are very similar in design, practically no difference, but compared to the Trinomic, the V3 and V4 have a sole which has different sections of grip compared to the Trinomic which has just two main pieces of rubber. The first piece being hole and just with the added texture of the grip which wears down pretty easily whereas the descendants have extra pieces big gaps in between so if you're training outside especially in winter you're going to get mud grit stones anything stuck in between the grip which can become really annoying 
compared to the Trinomic, which is one flat piece and reliable. I will say that the Descendant, both of them are much more sturdy, more rigid shoe, takes a longer time to break in, and the sole is much harder and thicker than the sole and heel on the Trinomic. So I personally, I would choose these just because of that and the fact that the mesh on these and the stitching has held up as well as it has. Compared to a couple of the newer models, the Puma Suede or the Puma Roma, I will say that there is less cushioning on those shoes, but a lot of people prefer them because they're more flat style. They can be much nicer for landing precisely on your jumps and not slipping out, whereas on these trainers you're going to get more sole, more heel, and generally not be able to feel your landings as well until you wear them in properly like I have. The Puma suede especially can be much easier to find, you can pick them up in your local stores and the sizing is probably not going to be an issue, I've not had anyone else say that, whereas on these make sure you buy in a size half above like I said, unless you find that there's a lot of room in your natural size, in which case you might be able to get away with the normal size. And just to say, it's down to preference, the last two shoes are usually canvas or leather, whereas these are always mesh, and some people prefer the canvas style shoes, some people prefer mesh. And finally for Puma, there is a Puma Trinomic XT2, and in terms of differences, there's barely any. The sole is slightly changed, but generally you won't notice a difference, and in the XT2, there's more plastic in the heel, I'll probably put a picture on screen now, but I don't think you'd notice any difference when using them. These shoes do come in varying colours and styles, so generally it's just down to personal preference. Lastly, I'm going to compare these shoes to a similar style of shoe, but by Adidas, the Adidas Essential Star 2 and the Adidas Energy Cloud. For your money, I think these are generally cheaper and I will say that they have held up, they've done really well for the amount of time that I've wore them. The padding is probably a similar amount in the Adidas compared to these and with the Energy Cloud you'll notice that the sole is slightly more raised so that's something to bear in mind whether you like your flat shoes or your rounded shoes for taking off and striding, taking impact. All three pairs of shoes are very comfortable, very lightweight and breathable I can say that the Adidas Essential Star 2s were a big hit last year and probably moving into this year we'll see more of them and probably the Adidas Essential Star 3 because like these and the X2 there's barely any difference. I can say compared to the Star 2 that this is a one two piece hole and uh, there's no flaking, no tearing whereas in the Essential Star 2 after hard training lots of hours you'll notice flaking and peeling which I think is probably the biggest complaint for most shoes along with going through the toes and so with these shoes there's not been any of that there's no peeling and the grip has stayed very strong, very sturdy the Energy Cloud I think does offer more cushioning is thicker than the Puma whereas the Star 2 is about on the same level and finally I will say that these shoes have done me very well I'm pleased with how they've performed not had barely any problems with them apart from the narrowness and having to find half a size above but yeah if you can pick them up for a cheap price you won't be disappointed they'll last you a long time and that's about everything thanks for watching if you'd like to make a comment suggest what shoes i should look at next i've got more ideas so be sure to subscribe and i'll see you next time